We can even look at creation. We can see that there's an eternal God. And so we're held accountable to that. So on Judgment Day, God's going to turn around all these unbelievers and He's going to say, I showed you creation itself screamed and, 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 and shouted my, my glory and, and praised me. He said in all creation, everything, and, you, and you, you, you turn it into something that you thought was just a, some random explosion, you know, with your foolish mind, darkened by your foolish hearts, and, and all because you wanted to, to stay in your sin. So the Bible says, we're going to talk, and we're going to go through Romans, but in uh, the, the epistle of John, the, uh, he talks about he's, he's coming, the Holy Spirit will convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And, uh, and, and I'll be honest, the, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't really look at that, and, but it just came upon me, sin, righteousness, and judgment, that it kind of lined up with what I was preaching. So, um, and, and what I wanted to share this morning, the uh, sin, righteousness, and judgment. And we talk about sometimes people say, well, you don't preach on, you shouldn't preach on sin, but the, uh, but we have to preach without sin. You know, we, we, we used to, when, when, when I was, we used to go out and we'd share the gospel with little tracks and stuff. We do that and we talk to people and you realize there wasn't anyone that ever got saved who wasn't lost. Amen. You know, the, uh, you, you, and you'd find people and you, you could share the gospel with somebody and those that were lost, they could get saved. But you would find people who, in their mind, they weren't lost. And in their heart, they, they didn't believe they were lost. And that's what, you know, the Bible says that the Lord's going to judge them according to the things in this, in this universe. He says it just screams out that there's an eternal God that you, you don't know. But they don't, they, they have, their heart has been darkened and hardened to the point that they don't believe that they have any need. And so those, those are not the ones to whom we were sent. Amen. We're supposed to preach to them, preach to everyone, and, and we don't know what's going to happen in someone's heart. But the manifestation is when someone doesn't receive you, Jesus sent out his disciples said, when they don't receive you, he said, wipe the dust off your feet and go. But the uh, but those those that they're they're not they in their mind they are not lost. They are in the dark and they believe that they have light. And it, you know you can't convince somebody that there's something out there that they need if they if they believe they're self satisfied. And so we always found that you had to. Make sure someone was lost. Well, the same way, you can't receive forgiveness for something that you believe isn't isn't wrong. And so we've got churches that have, they don't preach on sin. And so you've got a whole congregation of people that are not being called under God's standard and, and what God requires, and they're not being pulled up and lifted up into that. And it's a it's glory. It's a good thing. God is trying to raise us up from our flesh, from what we would live in, to raise us up, not because He's trying to be mean to us or condemn us for these things that we're doing. He's trying to do it because there's glory. Amen. And there's greater manifestation of glory. And the and if you if you love the world, hey, we've had some of the world. Amen. We've, this is the world right now. You know, this is and the unbelievers got it got it way worse, way worse. But this is a, you know, we've had we've had enough. I've had enough of the world. Amen. Last couple of weeks, we've had enough of the world. I want more heaven and uh, I want more heaven. But the uh, but you can you know, you can have as much as you want. And some of these churches are trying to get more. Um and it is uh, Romans 6, we're going to talk through Romans 6, and uh, Romans 6, 7, and 8. And those are, those are 6, 7, and 8 are, are incredibly important. I would say, um, you know, you could just go ahead and, and put Romans 6, 7, and 8, and, uh, and probably put it in your, you know, wherever you, you, you know, put it somewhere, your kitchen or something like that, or where you eat, um, just a place, and just read it, and read it, and read it, and read it. Um, and it's something that you could just go ahead and, and, and memorize and just start to commit to memory and repeat it over and over again and meditate on it. Because this really is the gospel according to the Apostle Paul. And he's he, it's, it, Romans, this is, this is the gospel. This is the, the key thing. And when they talk about sin, righteousness, and judgment, the, uh, here in Romans 6, 7, and 8, he's actually, he's actually laying this out. In, in chapter 6, he's saying, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that, so grace may abound? So Paul's actually saying he's condemning sin. That's what the Bible says the Holy Spirit would come and do, is condemn sin. And so he's condemning sin. And in Romans 6, he's answering the question, because a lot of times people say, well, if there's forgiveness, and we have churches, and pastor preaches against this, we have churches that are, and preachers, I don't know, it's hard to call them churches, we've got people that are basically saying, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, oh God, He loves you, and it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, He loves you, that's true, but it matters what you do. It matters a lot what you do. As a matter of fact, that you know that we are we are born into this world, and if Jesus doesn't come back, we're going to die and be buried, and all we have is what we did. 
That's all we have. So it, it definitely matters what you do. So this whole idea about, oh, it doesn't matter what you do. Hey, you know, whatever. We just, you know, we're church. Yeah, sure. We got some people. They sin, whatever. We don't matter. Yeah, no, it matters. It matters a tremendous amount. Because it, the Bible actually says there in verse 2, it says, God forbid. He said, because we have grace, because he's trying to, what, what Paul's trying to do in, in talking about sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin, because we have a sin nature. And in Romans chapter 7, he'll go in here, and a lot of people use this. He's talking about the, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it would take a long time, but I want to give a flavor this morning and just kind of um, whet your appetite to go read and study this thing. And we might go more in depth um, in, in other other services. But he starts talking about, and these are these are some famous verses some people use, and whether you're familiar with them, but he's in, in chapter 7, if you look, and he says that the... Uh, in, in verse 14, he says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And this is Paul talking, because a lot of times you'll think, well, he was living at a level and I'm at a level. You know, we, we start to kind of rate and rank, rank and think about different levels and whatever. But he's saying that the apostle who's writing the Bible, through whom the word of God is coming, through whom a lot of the New Testament, book of Acts and everything, he was a man who took the gospel of the Gentiles. He preached in Rome and he was able to share the gospel up to the highest levels of of government and everything because he was in prison and the uh, and he appeals the Roman citizen to go to go to Rome but he's he's preaching to all these people um, the you know high level government people there in the region so the uh, but he says for that which I do I allow not for what I would that do I not but what I hate that I do so this is a this is kind of it's there's a lot of I do and do not and would would whatever if you read it fast you, you might you know I might have just gotten it. but the uh, but what he's really saying is that he's saying that there's things that I would want to do and yet I don't and then there's some things he's saying that I shouldn't do and I hate but I do and he's and he's going through he says he says but if I do what I would not then I'm saying that and I'm saying that I wouldn't do it, so I'm saying that the law is good, and these, these commandments and these things, they're, I'm saying that they're good. I'm testifying to the goodness of a holy standard and a righteous standard. So he's saying you can't throw it away. You can't have a church. You can't have a preacher and turn around and say righteousness and holiness don't count for anything. And he's saying that, and it, here he is saying, even if, whether I, even if I don't do these things, I still hold them as good, and I still recognize the fact that I should not be doing these things. And so he's saying, but now it is no more. But if it's if I'm saying that this is not good, then he's saying it's no more I that's do, that, that does it, but sin that's dwelling in me. For I know that in my flesh there's no good thing dwells. But because because to will, he's saying to will, meaning to will to actually do desire what I what I desire to do deep down in my heart. He goes, it's present within me. But he says, but how to perform those things that which is good. I'm finding sometimes lacking, and I'm not able to do these things that I that I would desire to do. He said, "For the good that I would, I would not; but the evil which I would not, that that's what I do." So, so if it's not, so if if I'm doing something that I wouldn't want to do or I don't want to do, he said, "It's not me that's doing it; it's the sin that's dwelling in me." He goes, "Then I find this law: when I would do good, evil is present within me, because he says, in my innermost man, I delight in the law of God." So when we come in your church and we praise God and we worship and we sense the Holy Spirit moving amongst us and we say, this is home. This is, this is a, it can almost be, I tell you, it's better than any drug. It's better than getting drunk for sure. The, uh, you can sit here and praise God and you can sit at your home and you can let, st stand up and raise your hands and praise God and you can keep doing it. You can keep praying and you can get find places and God will do a work inside of you and he'll do a work inside of you. There is no psychiatrist, psychologist, shrink, counselor, whatever, who's going to help you or comfort you like the Holy Ghost. He will straighten things out on the inside that no, no professional person can straighten out. And, the, uh, and if any of that stuff, uh, I'm, just, I'm not sure about you know, Christian psychology or whatever so much, because the, uh, the Holy Ghost, why, why would we be paying people? Uh, you know, it's like a, when, when we have a, the Holy Ghost is free. Amen. And we would be sitting here with somebody, but we can pray in the Holy Ghost and read the Bible. We have the mind of a mind of Christ. And uh, and we have the the. Uh, it says when Jesus ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men and said he gave apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. And those are five. goals. He never I, I never read uh, Christian psychologists. It's not in there. It didn't say he gave the psychologists. So I just don't know why we would take something that's humanist in nature and the. Uh, 
and then turn around and say, hey, let's try to see if we can bring this into our church. Amen? I want to bring the church into that, that world. I want to bring the gospel into the world. I don't want to find things in the world and say, hey, that looks good. Let me bring that into the church. No, we've got plenty in this Bible. We've got plenty in the Holy Ghost. There's, there's plenty. There's nobody who's basically who's, who's gone through the Bible and gotten in the Holy Ghost and gotten these things and has exhausted, amen, and found them all. The, uh, no, no one has done that yet, so we don't need to go find, run around the world and find stuff and, the, and say, hey, how can we bring this into the church? The, uh, and the same token, I'll, I'll be just meddling here a little bit, but the, uh, you know, there's a lot of these things you read about. Everybody gets in, and all people, you know, good people, and they might be going to church or something, and they, you know, say, hey, I believe in the Bible. And then you find out, they say, well, I'm eating all of this because, you know, when, when, uh, when we were evolving and we were living in caves and all this stuff, and, the, and then the whatever, and they ate, and, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you're, yeah, Adam and Eve were in the garden. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Now, this whole thing about your ancestors running around in caves, you know, eating, you know, killing woolly mammoths and all this stuff. I just don't, you know, whatever. I mean, I know there's caves and there's mammoth tusks and stuff like this. But don't be turning your whole diet around because a bunch of people who have a model of how things came to be that they don't even have good evidence in the ground for. Amen. Uh, you know, so and because they're, it's unbelief. So don't build anything in your life upon unbelief. It's just, you know, it's not a good, not a good thing. The uh, you got shifting sands over there, and somebody says, hmm, "This this will be good. Let me lay a foundation here and start, you know, ha making decisions about what I eat and how I live and all this stuff based on that." No, the uh, there's plenty of good good health advice in the Bible, amen. And the uh, and it, and that that's, it has to be wisdom. You know, people run around saying, "Well, you, bread, bread is so bad." Maybe there's something we do with bread now that is bad. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not a complete health expert, but I know one thing. Jesus said, "I am the bread of life." So don't go tell me that bread is bad. There might be something about the bread we eat that's bad, but don't tell me bread's wrong and bread is bad. When Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, it, Jesus knows something about our bodies. He knows something about health. Amen? And so, you know, anytime somebody starts telling you something, they got diet advice. And if they're a Christian, you can say, brother, sister, you know, let me give you some gospel. Amen? Let me, I can share something with you. I can encourage you in the Lord. We don't have to be bound with all this stuff. We're, we're being led astray by, by all sorts of people that are unbelievers. And, the, uh, and who should be leading who? Amen. We ought to be, we, we ought to be leading. The, uh, we ought to be leading them. Um, you don't want to go where they're trying to lead. The, uh, so, so we need to have, we have preeminence in these things. So meanwhile, so I'm back on Romans 7. So he's saying these things. This is, he's talking about a law in his, in, his, in his body that's warring against the law in his mind and bringing him into captivity and the law of sin. So he's saying, oh, wretched man. Here's the thing that people don't, everybody, they, they just read these verses and they say, oh, Christians sin, they sin, even Paul sin. Hey, Paul sin, hey, ever sin, sin, it's no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. Then pretty soon you got people saying that, and they quit reading. He says, oh, wretched man that I am. See, Paul's saying I'm wretched because of this. He's not saying it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. He's saying I am wretched. He's saying, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body, from the body of this death, this, this flesh that I have, who shall deliver me? He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's saying that the gospel, the cross, and Jesus Christ, in, in his death and resurrection, his death on that cross, he's our salvation for this wretchedness that we have in our flesh. Amen? So he does not, Paul is not saying it's okay. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. No, he's saying it's awful. He's saying it's wretched. These things are evil. He's calling them evil. And like I said, we got churches that are turning around acting like, oh, sin's not really bad. No, sin is evil. Sin is death. Sin is death. And I tell you, the, the only reason why we die is because of sin. And the only reason why we're sick is because of sin. The only reason all these awful things that happen to us is because of sin. So it's, it, it's an, it is a terrible, awful thing. And our, 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 our Holy Ghost nature in us grieves when we see and we go through these things because it's not natural to us who have been given the seed of eternal life planted in ourselves by the, by the power of God when we were born again. Amen? And we shouldn't be witnessing to the world that, you know, hey, oh, sin's fine, sin's okay. Hey, it brings people in. Hey, I got a church that's okay with sin. Let's all come in there. You know, great. You got numbers. You've got no gospel. You've, you've traded. You've traded the gospel for, for a, move, a move of people. So, so Paul's saying these things. So there is sin. There is conviction. And the Holy Ghost is coming to convict of sin. So there is also, now we talk about in, in, uh, in, in chapter 6, he's saying that the, uh, in 6, for example, he says that the, uh, in verse 22, for example, and he's talking about, he says, 
we have been made free from sin. We've been servants to God. He's, we've been made free because of, of Christ's death and resurrection. The power that he, when he died, he gave us the power to become born again. And that he gave us the power to become baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came upon people. And the, uh, but he could come upon people who were sanctified and made righteous in his image, now created with that seed of eternal life because we could be born again because of because believing on him, believing in Jesus and believing and putting our faith in him now gives us the right because that was his will, that those that follow him and those that believe in his name, he should his will was that they should have eternal life. And so we receive that eternal life by his will. So we have righteousness bestowed upon us, bestowed upon our sinful flesh and the ability for God to come in. It was a, it's a miracle. It's, it's a miracle for Mary to receive the, 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 the Holy Spirit being become upon her and that she is, he is the, the, Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit inside of this woman who was a virgin. And, and, and so that's, it's important. Amen. We know that the, the, it is important that Mary was a virgin. That's why the Bible says that. And so once again, you've got uh, false churches running around and like, no, it's no big deal. No, it's our, our very life. Our eternal life depends upon it. Our eternal life depends upon him having eternal life and giving it and putting it in his will that we should have it. Amen. It had to be there for us to inherit. So these things, so eternal life, so righteousness comes through the cross. Righteousness comes through Jesus Christ and faith in him. So we can have righteousness even though we have uh, sin, uh, even though we have sin in our members that we struggle with. We do this, you know, we, we deal with this evil, but there is righteousness. And so, you know, we, 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 what happens is we end up, because this is our human nature, and we, uh, sometimes we'll add sin to this whole equation just by, just by starting to, to worry about whether we're good enough in our flesh. And I can give you the answer, amen? you got nothing to worry about. You're not good enough. Amen? It's, don't worry. Praise God. Don't worry. You know what? The, uh, sometimes people can come in here. Jesus laid his hands on disciples who weren't even, didn't even have the Holy Ghost. And he commissioned them. I don't even know if he laid hands on them in the Bible. He commissioned them and sent them out. And they had power over sickness, over devils. They cast out devils, preached the gospel, preached the good news of the kingdom. And I don't know how long these people have been with him, but they just believed in him and he gave them power to go do that. But we've got people who have been serving God for years and years and years. They become accustomed to the power not working with them and, and, in and through them. And they start thinking, well, I'm just not at that level. Well, maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe it's not, maybe I'm not living holy enough. You know, these folks, I, they, they, they showed up and Jesus commissioned them. He hadn't been with them more than a year or so, a few, you know, whatever, not too long. And I don't know how much time they'd spent with him personally, but he told them to go out and they believed him and they walked in miracle power. I, these weren't people, saints that have, had lived and perfected holiness over years and years and years. Amen. The miracle power is there. And the uh, and, and I'm reminded so much is a great A.A. A. Allen. And I don't want to talk, you know, too, too much. I don't, you know. No judge him or anything like that, but I do know that he walked in for tremendous miracle power of God. But I've also heard that he he would when he was not walking in miracle power of God when he was not doing something. Some people say he was he was drunk. He spent time struggling with alcoholism, you know. And he would come. He would he was in sin. He was he was in sin. And then he would repent. He would come in the power of God come upon him. But you know sometimes we worry. We say, oh maybe I've done some. We condemn ourselves more than more than what God intends. And sometimes we, the devil comes in and condemns us because of sin, and we get condemned and not convicted. And there's a difference. Condemnation says that you have done something, and you can't get out of it. You have done something, and, and you, you have done something, and you've messed up so much you're never going to get back. But conviction says, no, Jesus said, how many times would you forgive somebody? He said, 70 times seven. He said, and, and the gosh, how much more? He's, Jesus is talking to his disciples and telling them how to forgive their brothers and sisters. But he says, he says, even us, as wicked as we are, God even more so much gives us good gifts. Amen. So we can count on God for forgiveness. We go to his throne boldly. So there is the righteousness. It's not in what we're doing. It's not in our own personal holiness necessarily. It's in what God did through us, did on the cross so that we can receive that. But what, what, the, what the Bible is saying is that, is that in, in 6 and 7 and 8 is that once you realize this, the, the, uh, is, and that's why it culminates in eight is, is it goes through this whole thing. And then he says, therefore, and, and we read this a bunch, but in, it says, therefore, there is therefore in chapter eight. But a lot of times we read that, but we don't go back and understand that he set the whole foundation in six and seven, seven saying that I'm sold to sin, even though I have been. It's, he talks about the will because and he actually talks about it through marriage. He says that it's just like a woman who's married to a man. He, he says that the, the law and sin has to die in order for them to be married to another. He's saying that in order to be married to Christ, 
that that law of uh, you know in the old covenant and those things and its standards and stuff. It had to die, but it died in Jesus Christ in His body because He fulfilled it. Amen. So He fulfilled that thing, and what He also did was He freed us from a covenant, a, a marriage covenant, in essence, that God had made with humanity only through a chosen people, and the rest of the people were out of it. But Jesus fulfilled it, and in fulfilling it, He was granted the right to have another covenant and another will, which was which was different and better, a new and better covenant. Uh, and Hebrews talks about that. But the uh, but here we are. So He's saying this foundation, but He's saying there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And why am I saying this? I'll tell you, the, uh, um, you know, the last, last couple weeks, um, you know, we've been praying and believing God for a miracle, but it seems like it's taken a long time. And a lot of things happen and stuff, and so some things haven't happened the way we desire. And we, you know, we've been praying for stuff. And the, uh, but which, what happens is when things don't happen the way you want or expect or, or desire, that you can, you can fall and in, in, you know, in, in your faith get attacked. And then sometimes when you do that, the devil will come in and he'll start condemning. Oh, you know, you don't, you know why? Because you prayed, you might have prayed every morning for, you know, for half hour or something or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But if you had really just quit everything and prayed straight for two or three days, none of this stuff would have happened. You know, it's, it's all on, it's all on you and your problem. And next thing you know, you can get condemned and you can feel like, man, I've just ruined everything. I'm just, you know, it's all on me. And you know what the answer is? We, yeah, we all have ruined everything. Praise God. God loves us. He forgives us. And there is no condemnation. And he can walk in the Spirit and choose to walk any point in time. In Romans 6.23, it says, the, uh, and I'm kind of skipping through 6, 7, and 8 and all, like I said, is something you need to, to study. The, uh, but it says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, and the, uh, and that was not, the, uh, that was not the, the verse that I tended to read, but that's a great verse. Praise God. The, uh, anyways. He's a, but in eight, he's saying there's no condemnation for those who who walk in 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 the after the not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because what you can do, he's saying, the law of the life of, of Christ, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. And so when you're free, you can you you don't walk in condemnation. When you don't walk in condemnation, you can walk in the righteousness of God. So yeah, actually that's what uh, is Romans three twenty three. I don't know, it was six, seven, and eight. Three twenty three is the other verse. It says for the uh, for their. Uh, I'm, We'll, we'll turn there, amen. The uh, whew, the uh, I've had a I've had quite a week, um, a, a good week, and the uh, a good week because all the things that you got going on, you were it's just for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and this is the reason why we, we add that and why God put it there in, in three. If you're reading three up to six, seven, eight, it says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. See, there's sins of omission, sins of commission. Sins of commission are sometimes, those are things that we track a lot and we say, that person did something bad. I heard a cuss word come out. I saw that person, they had a, they were smoking a cigarette or whatever, and all of a sudden, woo. You know, and, and a lot of times you go to a church and they say, you know, that, that person, they, they did this or they did that. Ooh, you know, that's bad. That's bad. And you got a whole church full of people that are kind of looking at each other and trying to figure out, well, what are you doing wrong? You know, somebody else is doing wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, we even had a person... Um, who was uh, he? Kind of went a little bit off the deep end, but he came into church and he was there was a commercial with a dog. He says there ain't no bugs on me because he had a flea collar, and this guy started came in there and started singing it like it was praise or something like that. I don't know. Some of you might remember, um, like he was like there ain't no bugs on me. You know there ain't maybe bugs on some of your mugging, but there ain't no bugs on me. Um, and uh, and and you know this is this is what happens in religion is sometimes you get in and suddenly you create a set of hierarchy where you say I'm justified and you're not. And I watched you do something, and <laughs> it ain't on me. So, hey, somehow I win. No, you lose. <laughs> you lose. You lose when you're playing that game. Because it says all have sinned. All have sinned, and we think we know what that means. We think that means, oh, that guy, you know, he fell away. He went off to the club, and he was up, whatever, and he was drunk all night and everything like that, and he was sinned. You know, like maybe A.A. A. Allen, you know, it's, they found him. He was, you know, he'd, he'd fallen off the, the wagon, they say, or something. And so all of a sudden everybody, oh, this, this, this he's just no good. You know, he or she, they're just, they're no good. But, but yet, you, you know, you think you're, you're great because you didn't do that. Well, it says that all have sinned and come short, King James, sometimes as you've fallen short or fall short of the glory of God. So the question is, so you didn't do that. You didn't, you didn't have a binge drinking and, you know, lay out all night or whatever and show up. So that means you didn't fall short of the glory of God? You are you really think you know you're in there trying to judge who did this and who did that? Are you really 
at the level of the glory of God? Amen? Yeah. Is, is, have, you, have you all seen the brother or sister in Christ who, who's, who's, who's because they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have their binge drink or they didn't go whatever, that there they were at the glory of God? You know, I, I haven't. And when we talk about the uh, what is the glory of God, the only thing we can go back to, we can see sometimes preachers and evangelists and moves of God and people walking in these things that, are, that they're, 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 they're there. And, you know, sometimes short periods of time in their life. The only one we know who did consistently is Jesus. Amen. And, and one of them, if you want to know what does it mean to, to actually not fall short of the glory of God? Well, one thing is it means to preach the truth, no matter people trying to kill you. And they will try to kill you. And the other thing is it means the gifts will, will tend to move. You know, Jesus had, he, he healed everybody, got healed in those things. He did not fall short of the glory of God. His, his faith, his heart, everything like that was not falling short of the glory of God. And what did it get him? It got him a death on a cross. The, uh, this world, if you don't fall short of the glory of God, and some people say, well, I didn't go drink or dip or run around or do that kind of stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm, those people are, those are bad people, but I'm, I'm never, there ain't no bugs on me, you know. The, uh, I'm, I'm, everything's great. Well, okay, brother, sister, the, uh, is the world trying to kill you? They must be because you haven't fallen short of the glory of God. And if you are, that's what Jesus showed. He said the world, he said, if it's trying to kill me, how much more for you, you all? So, so the, uh, so because he had a, he had an anointing of protection, but the, 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 what the Bible is saying is that when you are, when you aren't falling short of the glory of God, you're probably, you're probably being hunted down because people are trying to kill you. Amen. But we sometimes think as long as we're satisfied with our own measure, we think that falling short of the glory of major or falling short of the glory of Jeff or falling short of the glory. We say, oh, I haven't fallen short of the glory of my own standard. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says sin, you've fallen short of the glory of God in heaven. God who is perfect. Amen. And these people say, oh, well, do you, do we just might as well give up. We'll never get there. No, we've got the Holy Ghost. You can get there. That's, the, that's the, the reason why there's no condemnation is because how can you condemn someone? How can you condemn someone who's doing the same thing that you're doing, which is falling short of the glory of God? Now we all have the opportunity. Amen? What's, what's the goodness of God is that He's given us power. The Bible says He's given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Life because we have, to, we have eternal life. We can live with Him throughout eternity. But because of godliness, because you can be alive and, and not have godliness. Amen? But they, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, which means not only can you survive and live, not only are you going to escape the judgment that puts you in the second death and sends you to hell for eternity, but it also means that you actually have all things that pertain to godliness, which means the power to live above sin, which means the power to believe God and see the miracle power flow and, and everything happen and all this stuff. And so you say, well, somebody, oh, well, we tried that and it didn't work, so we changed all of our doctrine. We changed what we believe. We quit believing the Bible because we tried it and we didn't work. Well, I know why it doesn't work. Amen? Because we have fallen short of the glory of God. That's why it doesn't work. It's easy explanation. Well, I couldn't get my head around that. I just, I prayed, I did everything the Bible said, it didn't work. Well, somewhere we fell short of the glory of God. But there is no condemnation. Because there's only one that can condemn. Amen? And that is God. And Jesus. And you know, he had that woman, and I love that. He said he had all these women. He said, let the, let the first one without sin cast the first stone. And nobody did. You know, there's only one who could cast that stone. And he's saying, no, I don't condemn you. She says, well, do you con no, he says, I don't condemn you. Amen? That's why there's no condemnation in those who walk. He says, you can walk after the Spirit. We have the opportunity. There's no condemnation to them which is in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Because if you're walking in the flesh, when you're sitting there trying to play this whole game of, well, they did something wrong and I didn't do it, so you know, they go, Ooh, they're a sinner and I'm not. You know, we. Okay, you're not walking after the Spirit when you're doing that. You're falling short of the glory of God right there. You're a sinner too. Yeah. Amen? I mean, I don't know. Amen. And, you know, <laughs> sinner. Amen and being a sinner. The, uh, but but the, whole, the Bible says that there's no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus. We walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Because we can repent. We can continue. Lord, forgive me. Lord, we can walk in, in forgiveness. We can walk in the, and, and say, Lord, forgive me and change me. First of all, you have to, in order to do that, you have to call sin what it is. The evil that it is. Second, you have to recognize that sometimes in our flesh that we are that we struggle and we are bound in this flesh that is, is pulling against us. But third, you also have to recognize that God has given us the ability to live in the level of His glory. Amen? All those three things. And He's the only one who can condemn you for not doing it because no one else has. Praise God. And so and, and so you look, look in the Bible and say, is he, is he looking to condemn you? 
No, he's looking that none should perish. He's looking to save you. Praise God. He gave his son so that you could have eternal life, so that you could be forgiven. So he's looking to save us. So we know where the blame is on why things don't work out sometimes. We know where the we know where the glory is, why things do work out. Praise God. We thank God because we know that we have a miracle. And we know where it came from. Amen? We have a miracle came from heaven. We know where it came. It didn't come from this earth. It didn't come from the devil. We know what he, we know that our, our pastor has, has received a miracle. And the uh, and 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 reason the way we believed and we prayed, and we didn't give up on that. But the uh, but the doctors did, and that's one definition of the miracle: is the people who know how things ought to work see something work completely different. Amen. Amen. We we know how things ought to go, and we know when you step out on a on a lake that you you sink. Amen. But if you if you don't sink, then we call that a miracle. We say there's a person standing on a lake, so that's a miracle. So the doctor says they had a bunch of patients, and they said they were all kind of at the same level. And the doctors, and and I, I, I can, I'll get into rating doctors or condemning doctors or whatever. Some are better than others, amen. And the, uh, but they all work in the mercy of God. And the ones that recognize that are better are usually better doctors, amen. The uh, you don't get to be. I mean, you you can be you can be smart and you can be talented and and somewhere it's all it's all the mercy of God. But the uh, but the doctors said that nobody said that they had a, a, a group of people and they were all in there and the uh, and they were all kind of in the, in the bad shape. They said that the pastor is the only one that that they think is 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 going to make it. The rest of them did not. So so. We prayed. We prayed for Wesley. We prayed for Pastor. We wanted more. We wanted more than what we got. But everything we got is from heaven, and everything we got is from God. And if we could be with Wesley right now, we know that the uh, we know that he received also, Amen. And we know that God is faithful, and He doesn't miss anything. We know every good thing we got is from God. But we also we know that there's a devil, and we know that he has some power on this earth. And we know that we don't. We have not always overcome everything he's done. We not, have not always had victory in everything that the devil is trying to do. But we know that in Christ we do have that victory. Amen. We have it in eternal life, and we may not get it in this world in this flesh because we still struggle. And the Bible says that that it's because of sin that we fall short of the glory of God. The uh, that sinning and falling short of the glory of God are, are the same thing. And so we have to understand sin for what it is. When we say sins of omission, sins of commission. Sins of commission, meaning somebody did something wrong. And then, you know, sometimes we'll sit there and say whether we, we, we start to think whether we forgive them or not, um, which really shouldn't be something you, you do if, you, if, you're, if you're walking in the Spirit. It's not something you do if you walk in the Spirit because God is forgiven. The, uh, he's forgiven those that ask. And I've never seen where Jesus said somebody, anybody said, Lord, you see, Jesus would say your sins are forgiven to somebody that needed healing. And the Pharisees got and said, how can he forgive sins? The... Uh, and he even said it when people said they didn't say they, they needed healing, and the uh, they didn't say Lord necessarily you know forgive me, but the uh, but Jesus is looking to forgive, and and the Bible even talks about he says that if if you can if you can find somebody and, and this is in James he's saying if you can if you can lead them to repentance, you 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 cancel out a multitude of sins by leading them to repentance. Amen. So he's in the he's in the business of washing away sin. Sickness, death, all these things, that's what God is doing. Amen. He's fixing, he's changing, he's, he's bringing his glory from heaven into this earth. And that's his desire. And the, uh, and the reason why things don't always work is because there's sin in this earth. And people say, well, where is it? And I'll, I'll hunt it down. Well, look in the mirror. Amen. We all look in the mirror. And, and, look, look in, and, and, and it's all throughout the world. But the, uh, and if we had no sin, we would, we would, we would see a, com- a complete victory. But the reason why we don't see complete victory is because of sin. But the reason why we see victory in anything is because of God. Amen? And so we have miracle power, and it's flowing through us, and it's not everything. Maybe we'd say we'd like some more. And so that's the, the uh, I just believe that God's calling us through all of this into a deeper walk, into a deeper walk because he, he wants to manifest and show himself in this world so that more can be saved. That's the, the whole purpose, more, more can be saved. That's the, the only thing that, that really matters for our eternity is the salvation, the souls of men. God, His Word, and the, the, etern- the soul that he, he, he desires to come to heaven, to come to know Him. 
And so he desires to manifest himself through us. And we, you know, we, we see some manifestation, but we could see more. And we could see more, and that's what he's calling us to do. And as we read uh, later on there in Romans, Paul, Paul even talks about it. He says, wretched man that I am. But he says that Christ delivers him from this thing. And he says he allows him to pursue and try to lay hold of this thing for which he has been apprehended. The, uh, the, the very gospel, the power of God to, uh, to walk. And, and we know that as, we've, as we walk in this gospel and we've suffered loss, and this has been a, this has been a terrible year in terms of what we'd, what we'd expect or what we'd, what we'd want, but even these things are like a, you know, if you, we, they, they should call us to honor and to, to, to raise up our level and desire to see God move. Because these people, they, our friends, you know, Tony and Wesley, these people that we've lost this year, they, they desired and they, they, they finished the race and they were serving God up till the day that they, that they went up to, to be with him. And so, and so they, they ended in faith, amen, and ended in belief. And so we, that inspires us also to say, how can, we, how can we live a lot and do the same, amen? Not to, and the devil will use this to try to wedge and cause you to fall away. But the, but the power of God is that he would hold us through anything, through all of the things of life, the things that, 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 that tear at us or things that, things that work at us. And then, and then if, we, if we struggle with why, the uh, the Bible says it's not and it can't, you know it's 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 not you and it's not you, you know you or me or whatever it's it's us and it's it's there's the difference between us and Jesus amen and that difference is that the, the sin falling short of the glory of God and but there is no condemnation because God desires to raise us up out of that and it's the same thing when I was very when I was born again the day I was born again all of the things that I had the, the sinfulness in my life and the devil who had hold of me in my flesh and in my conscience and everything like that, he was his grip was released, and completely that day, and and in that day I was I was made holy in my in my own sinful flesh. There was something made holy that I could be baptized in the Holy Spirit, Amen. That there was room that my body became the temple and I could be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the uh, but it's the same today, even in anything that we do where we fall short of the glory of God, we can receive forgiveness. And in receiving forgiveness, we can stand. We can stand in pure righteousness and holiness, not because of what we do, which is why we have. There is no condemnation, amen. Because we have no ability to condemn anybody else, because everything that they're doing is something that we've done. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, but we have that opportunity to to live a life that is without sin. So I just wanted to share that this morning: the uh, sin, righteousness, and judgment. Because he's convicting us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin is real. And it is what causes us to fall short of the glory of God. And righteousness is real too because God it gives us the ability to overcome these things. And we can live a holy life. And in that holy life there's power. And, and walking and there's manifestation. And there's also, there's, also, uh, there's also trouble. Amen? There's trouble from the world. Peter talks about there's two kinds of trouble. No, I don't want to go. But there's trouble that we get for living godly. And then there's trouble we bring on ourselves for living stupid. And he's saying that, you know, stupid, just fix. But he's saying you can't fix the godly part. He's saying don't change it. Amen. You just got to endure it. So, uh, so he, you know, he talks about that. And actually enduring the trouble for living godly, he's saying you're, at, you're, you're also fulfilling those same wounds and things that Christ took in terms of his body. You're still, there's still some manifestation going on in this world of those things. And, the, uh, and, and, and we endure those things, and God gives us the ability to do that. And the apostles, what did they do when they were doing that? They were in prison. In, in stocks, and, and it said about midnight, and they weren't put in there at midnight. It's not like they'd been in there for 10 minutes. They'd been in there for hours, amen, in pain and in misery. And what were they doing? They were praising God so loud that everybody was hearing them, and suddenly an earthquake came. So that's one of the things when we talk about the uh, when we talk about falling short of the glory of God is the praise, amen, the praise. This joy that I have, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, amen. It didn't give it to me. This this Holy Ghost that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. We have something, and it is a praise. And you know what the the, the, the most amazing thing is that we can praise God even when we've even when the devil it seems like he's gotten us. Amen. We can still praise God, and that's that's really the greatest thing. It's the greatest rebuke to that devil, and it also glorifies God. And he, and and it's it's a wonderful thing. So you all continue with praise God, and everybody stand to your feet.